Come join me in the skies today. It's clear skies and sunset views as I make my way from Prince Edward Island back to Nashville, Tennessee on one of Air Canada's trusted de Havilland Dash 8 turboprop airplanes. Today we'll start our journey in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island and travel on to Montreal, Quebec. There we'll change planes and travel onwards to Nashville, Tennessee. At least that was the plan when I started filming this video, but we'll get back to that detail a little bit later. I arrived at the Charlottetown airport well ahead of my flight thanks to a mechanical delay and checked my bag. There was no line and I was met by a rather friendly ticketing agent who assured me that I still had plenty of time to make my connecting flight. After checking my bag, I had plenty of time to spare, so I decided to check out the small restaurant that they had at the Charlottetown Airport. After briefly reviewing the menu, I opted to just get a soft drink and relax for a short bit of time. The restaurant was quiet, and the chairs were comfortable enough. An hour before my plane was set to depart, I headed through security to watch my plane land. Once on the other side of the security checkpoint, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the Charlottetown Airport has a brand new open-air patio which was real plane spotting dream. As I sat waiting for my flight, I was able to watch a WestJet 737-8 land and taxi the apron. As I sat there watching the commotion on the apron as they prepped this WestJet flight for its return to Calgary, I saw another plane taxi under the apron. It's this plane that would be taking me on to Montreal. Before long, boarding started, and to my dismay, it seemed like the airport was only capable of boarding one flight at a time, and unfortunately, the WestJet plane got to board first. Boarding today would take place via plane stairs. It's always a bit of a pleasure getting to embark via plane stairs. To me, it's just something about walking across the apron, in awe of the machine, in its power, and everything that's about to bring me across the country. My seat for this flight was seat 2F, the exit row and the bulkhead seat. I had plenty of leg room for this short hour and a half flight to Montreal. The seat felt a bit narrow due to the tray table and the armrest, but there was nobody seated next to me so I had plenty of room. The first three rows of this aircraft are marketed as extra legroom seats, though by far the best seat to get for legroom is seat 1C, which has potentially unlimited legroom. As someone with pretty wide shoulders, I did note that my shoulders tended to stretch over the armrest into the seat next to me. There was no one there for this flight, however, had there been, space might have been a bit tight. Keep this in mind if you decide to book this next to another large person. Our airplane pushed back, and as we waited on the taxiway, we were told that air traffic control had put a 15 minute stop on our takeoff time. My chances of making my connection were next to nothing at this point, but there was nothing I could do but enjoy the flight. Once airborne, the flight attendants informed us that due to the quick plane change following the initial mechanical issue on our previous aircraft, that catering was unable to properly cater our aircraft. Accordingly, they would be unable to serve any sodas, however, they would be able to serve us coffee. Catering was standing, the crew did an excellent job with beverage service, offering us what they had. As time went on, I even noticed that the purser went around the aircraft offering extra pretzels and personally discussing connecting flights with all the passengers. I really felt like she cared about everyone on the plane. It was a very nice touch. In all, I think the crew that this airplane did a very good job, not only boarding on short notice, but also providing extra care and service to all of the passengers as they stressed over connecting flights.
As we made our approach to Montreal, it was clear that we were in somewhat of a holding pattern. This wasn't going to help my connecting flight, but at this point, there was nothing I could really do except for enjoy the views. So, I did. I sat back and I watched sweeping views of the terrain pass below me. And I only hoped that I could make my next flight. Eventually, the plane did make its way to Montreal, and it did land and taxi to the gate. However, as we were taxiing to the gate, I received a notification from Air Canada that I had, in fact, missed my boarding to my next flight. I wasn't surprised here, but it was at this point that I began the real adventure on rebooking my flight. I had somewhat mixed reviews dealing with Air Canada's customer service. Initially, they were unable to book me on a flight that would get me back to Nashville in time for my next trip. I initially found that there were options with their partner at United Airlines, and the ticketing agent was unenthusiastic to help me find that. After an hour waiting to retrieve my bag, I was able to finally get through to Air Canada's Aeroplan hotline. In the end, they were able to get me on that United flight connecting through Newark, and I'll share the details of that flight with you in another video. Stuck in Montreal for the night, Air Canada did give me a voucher for a hotel room. It was a fairly decent hotel room, and exhausted as I was from my travels, I decided to crash for the night. I would have to be back in the airport early to catch my next flight. In all, I think that Air Canada did a very good job on this flight, despite having to deal with a mechanical difficulty and some messed up travel plans, Air Canada was able to accommodate and fulfill their promise to eventually get me to my destination.